Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for tuning in to Fat Burning Man, where we help you look, feel, and perform at your best. Did you know that many people who sign up for marathons actually gain weight? Our friend Vinny Tortorich is back on the show this week, and as usual, he's holding no punches and telling it like it is. Vinny is, of course, a celebrity trainer, podcaster, speaker, cancer survivor, and best-selling author of Fitness Confidential. He's the real deal, and he's been selling out crowds lately to his comedy club shows out in L.A., even though he says he has no idea what he's doing. He and Anna Vocino, his co-host and fellow comedian, had me on their podcast recently, by the way. Fitness Confidential is the name of that one as well. Don't miss it, because I'm spilling the beans. Uh, we all are, actually, on the way that showbiz actually works. Also, stay tuned for Anna Vocino coming up as a guest of Fat Burning Man on this show to talk about her new cookbook, Eat happy. I'm actually recording with her right after I finish recording this, so I better be quick and it's a little bit trippy. But before we get to the show, I wanted to thank everyone who came out to hear me speak and play music this past weekend in Austin, Texas. If you came, you know that my parents flew in from Florida, which was totally a last minute thing, and my dad plays the banjo and my mom plays the stand-up bass. So uh, we actually played some old-time bluegrass music, howling out tunes at the Palmer Street Festival in Austin. And we did a surprise, actually a couple of surprise after-hour shows. More on that soon, and we may even share a few of those tunes. But I have to say that hanging out with Brian, Alicia, Kenny and Mandy, Tammy, and all the other folks from our community at the Tribe Party was definitely the highlight of the weekend for us. Pa some past guests of Fat Burning Man stopped by the... Uh, the party that we threw, including Mark Sisson, Mary Shenouda, Kyle Brown, Drew Manning, Joshua Weissman, who's actually coming over tonight to cook us dinner. I think it's going to be a duck breast. And he also cooks a mean sourdough. So watch out for him coming up on the show once again. And Tommy Whitaker, who was just on the show a few weeks ago to share his story of dropping over 120 pounds with the Wild Diet, came up and, uh, and met us. And we got to hang out for a while. And Tommy, if you're listening to this, so great to meet you, man. Uh, and everyone else, thank you so very much for making the trip. We hope for this to be the beginning of something, and, and we really want to throw more events uh, and make this a community-based thing. So thanks for your help in, in uh, making that happen, at least at a small scale here in Austin at the beginning. But uh, another cool thing that happened was a great dude named John came up, and uh, he said that he's dropped 190 pounds in the past 20 months after he saw The Wild Diet and Shanti on that ABC TV show. That's a pretty dangerous combination, Shanti plus Abel James. And along those lines, I can't say too much right now, but uh, hopefully you'll be seeing a little bit more collaboration down the road because Sean is such a great dude. And John, I mean, the idea that you can drop almost 200 pounds after watching something that resonated with you, as silly as that show may have seemed on the surface, I am so glad that it, it's helped so many people uh, change their lives. I can't imagine what it's like to drop 190 pounds, but I can I can say that anyone, you know, one of the coolest things about like uh, speaking at events like this, doing conferences and meeting all of you folks in person is that uh, n not only uh, do you obviously have more energy and you can move better and you feel better, but there's a little twinkle in your eye. And I can't wait to see what all you folks do next. So definitely keep in touch if you want to see an inside look at some of the feasts, music, and treats from our wild party, including bacon wrapped scallops, smoked salmon deviled eggs with caviar, lobster rolls and flank steak, roll ups with mango chutney, and arugula. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube under Abel James or Fat Burning Man. So no matter where you are, you have found your peeps. If you want to meet us, in person at our next tribe party or just through the interwebs and get our uh, coaching programs and our new meal plans this month that are awesome and totally done for you. All you have to do to meet us is go to fatburningtribe.com. If you struggle with yo-yo dieting, eating clean, or you just wanna level up your body and your mind, we built the Fat Burning Tribe just for you. Whether you have 100 pounds to lose or you're training for your next marathon, we can help, we've been there, and our coaches are working 24-7 to help you. You can join for a listener discount at fatburningtribe.com. Again, from any device, just head on over to fatburningtribe.com. Or if you just want to dip your toes into the wild diet, get some freebies and see if it's right for you, get our new mini cookbook and seven-day meal plans for free by visiting fatburningman.com 
and signing up for my newsletter. All you have to do is from any device, just type in fatburningman.com, pop in your email address, and I'll send the goodies straight to your inbox along with some other very exciting announcements and cool stuff. All right, on to the show with Vinny. You're about to learn how to tell when a broadcaster is BSing you, how to survive a road trip without eating horrible food, why you don't need protein powder or ketone supplements, why people gain weight after they sign up for marathons, and much more. Let's go hang out with Vinny. All right, folks, returning to the show this week is Vinny Torturich. He's been a personal trainer for 30 years, training Hollywood comedians and celebrities like Howie Mandel, Playmates, Captains of Industry, Ultra Athletes, Iron Man Triathletes, and even Pregnant Moms. Please welcome our oldest friend, Vinny Torturich. Sounds like someone went to uh, Wikipedia right before they had me on the show today. That's my secret, Vinny. I just raid Wikipedia for all the dirt yeah, on people. That, that's what I do. I, I never know who I'm talking to. I'm like, you know, I just go right to Wikipedia and figure it out. <laughs> well, I think it's important to know who you're talking to, but you know that I didn't learn what I know about you from the internet. We have uh, yeah. lots of uh, wonderful memories. You know, I got to say, Vinny, over the years, I have met so many pe- hundreds, probably thousands of, of great people in uh in, in life in general, not just, you know, the health industry, I want to say, yeah. but in the world in general. And you are one of the highlights. Just the few times that we've gotten dinner with you and hung out, and I'm not, I'm not kissing butt. I mean that because you're real, and we're going to go deep on this show here today. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, why are you not as big as Jillian Michaels? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, that's an interesting question. You know, it's funny. I get that question sometimes. You know, people will say, well... You should be on television like Jillian Michaels and you should be on. uh, And that's an interesting question because I I know you spent some time doing it. You were in a network show. Are you still on it? Where is that show now? Are you guys still doing it? No, I'm not doing another run of that show. (laughs) Okay, so that could probably answer your question for you. That could be another book, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let me, uh, you know. Way back in the day, and, and I, it's funny, I just said this on stage the other night, you know, I, you know, people say, well, why don't you do television like Jillian Michaels or like some of these other people? And I right. said, well, because I'm not willing to lie. Yeah. And they go, well, what do you mean? And I, and back in the day, and Abel, you're too young to remember this, but you, know, you and thank you for saying I've been in this industry for 30 years, but, but it's closer to 37 years. Like it's I said, you're my time. oldest friend. Yeah, it's I'm like the grandfather of this industry. And (laughs) back in the 90s, the only way there was no Internet, there was no no what we do here. There was none of this. And in order to get a gig, you would have to come up with a product. And then uh, one of the infomercial companies would then sign you to a a lifetime contract. And Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying lifetime uh, to be cute. Right. They would literally try to hook you into a lifetime. And I would come up with these great products. Sometimes they were videotapes, you know, back when you would put a, a, a cassette into a recorder <clears throat> or there were products that actually worked. Yeah. And I still have some of those gadgets hanging around my office today. I may put them out on VinnyTotteries.com at some cool. point. And they would do a thing where they would say, OK, we have you now under contract. So. They would hand me a contract. Let's say I brought one of my gadgets to them. Yeah. Then it would say, okay, sign this contract. And I would go, okay, let me take it home overnight. And I had an attorney, as I always do. I would pay that guy gobs of money. And a couple of days later, he would get back to me and he would say, uh, under no circumstances can I allow you to sign this contract. <laughs> and I would say, well, Why? And he he would tell me, he would say, well, they would own you for life. Right. And I would say, well, what does that mean? He would say, well, not only can they say whatever they want about your product, meaning, and by the way, when you're a young guy in this town, I was in my late 20s, I would go, but I can really use a couple of million dollars. Right. You you know what I mean? Yeah. Hell, I could use any amount of money, but man. They're telling me I can make a couple of million dollars and now you are putting a wet towel on this whole idea for me. Well, how could you? Right. And he would go, well, I'll try to come back to him with something that's livable for you. And he would explain to me, luckily, I had a really good attorney and he would explain to me, look, they're going to say that your product can help someone lose 20 pounds in 20 minutes. 
do you are you okay with lying? Right. And I was like, mm, no, not really. Maybe I can squint and get them to. He goes, no, no. When they decide what <laughs> yeah. you're going to say. Right. That's what you're going to say. And there is no you, you don't get a choice, even though you're the image on the screen. Right. And all your friends back home is going to see this. They don't care. Mm-hmm. All they care about is you saying what they tell you to say. And once you sign that contract, you're under contract. That's it. You're a puppet and now. I would, you're a puppet. But it, that was one step worse. He would say they would also own your name mm-hmm. into perpetuity. Right. And I would go, well, what does that exactly mean? It sounds harsh. He would say, okay, 20 years from now, if you come up with another product, you can't use Vinnie Tartar. You know, that's ridiculous. That's my name. Because no, 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 no. Right. They would own it. Guthy Rinker. I'll just name one of the companies. Guthy Rinker would mm-hmm. own your name. Yeah. You can't use it. Right. The artist formerly known as Prince. That's the actual reason that that happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Prince had to give up his name. Um, the band Boston had to, you know, they, they lost a whole career over stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you a story, Abel. I didn't mean to hijack your podcast with this, but no, I'll tell this you is great story. because we don't get to talk about this much. And I can't st- I'm not willing to say too much publicly at this point, but I definitely have a few rants stored up, too. So you are the master of rants. Let's go, man. I am old and ugly, and I don't care about the industry. So <laughs> yeah. I can say whatever in the hell I want, right. right? So, you know, you're still young. You can still make money in this industry, and, and I don't care about television. They've already lost me, so I right. can say what I want. Sure. So what happened was um, I was getting ready to sign a really bad contract. I was tired of watching all these other so-called experts make a bazillion dollars overnight, right. and, you know, people that I knew – that tra- they were trainers at the same gyms in Beverly Hills with me. And I-, I knew these people, they were nothing. And then the next day they would show up in a new Jaguar or something. I was like, I'm the idiot here. I'm the idiot. <laughs> right. I-, I need to do this. And I was in a dentist office and I saw there was a woman named Susan Powder. Do you even know who she was? I think she was from Texas. Did she have a so, show? Did she have short hair, kind of bleach? Short, blonde. And yeah. She was like the year before or two years before she was everywhere on every channel, right. every cable network. And it was like, you got to breathe. You got to eat. You got to move. You know, that was her thing. And she was like this crazy evangelical woman who was yelling how to get in shape. Just buy my tape. No, no one had sold as many products as Susan Powder, Is except right? for maybe except for maybe um, uh, what's her name with, with the thigh master, Susan oh, Summers. Sure. Yeah. She's on a cover of People magazine talking about how after all the bazillions of dollars she sold for the same company that was getting ready to put me under contract, Mm -hmm. that she didn't have enough money to pay her mortgage. Wow. She made bazillions for that company, yet she didn't own her name. She didn't own her likeness. She didn't own anything. And she was living in Texas and she was broke. That's what the article said. Yeah. And folks, you can go back and find the the back issues of People Magazine. I think that's where I read it. Mm -hmm. And right there, my heart sunk. And I went, this is what my attorney is talking about. Yeah. Because no one was bigger than her at that moment. That happens in the music industry all the time, too. Most most artists make nothing from their uh, CD sales or record sales or anything like that. Even people who've been touring for 25, 30, 40 years, they make money off the live shows. And uh, a lot of them don't, you, you might notice that you don't see them speaking out very often or doing appearances. And in a lot of cases, that's be- for a pretty dark reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy what goes on. Um, <clears throat> there are a few people in this industry who own their name. Uh, the four mentioned Suzanne Summers. Mm-hmm. Very few people get to own their name. Suzanne Summers did. Yeah. Uh, another guy um, who knows nothing about fitness, but he's helped gazillions of people, is um, uh, Richard Simmons. He owns Richard Simmons. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he made bazillions of dollars because some attorney was able to help him keep his name. Yeah. It sounds but crazy, you know, but think about yeah, that. Like yeah, your, your name, everything you ever say, your entire legacy, that's the right. thing that uh, most people who want to appear in front of a camera, especially these days, I, I, I want to say this because I feel like we've both been on, well, both sides of it, 
right? Yeah. Um, but man, is it scary? Those those big deals. As a musician, I've been a, you know playing gigs since I was eight years old, thousands of shows all over the world. And there's this illusion that's sold that you need to get that deal, get that break, be a star. Right. But if you want to see how that plays out, like follow Wayne's World. Right. It's like Rob Lowe shows up with his fancy car and his slick deal, and he's got this slimy deal, and then they ruin everything. It really is that kind of nutty, you know, and I don't think people realize that uh, on the surface, what really goes on behind the scenes. And yeah. uh, I've been very protective of my name over the years. As a matter of fact, when, when my book, you know, my book was a surprise hit. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember. You know, it's, it still is. It's fantastic. It's great. It still sells a lot of books, you know, and yeah. uh, it, the book is Fitness Confidential if your audience doesn't know what it is. And because it's not a straight fitness book that sells a prescription, it's just yep. my life in the industry. Right. Um, Sony Pictures bought it up. Uh, wow. Sony Television gave me, uh, what do they call that? Not an advance. They, um, um, they bought the option. Sure. They, they own the option. So you're going to be played by Justin Timberlake now. If there was a if there was a God, yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the bottom line is, is that first year, you know, I got that first year of option money. Yep. And I kept asking uh, Dean, I said, are they going to do anything with this? And he goes, no, they usually just shelve those things for years. And then the second year came around and um, they, you know, they optioned it again. They wanted to option it for a third year. And so I got the option money again. And then after that, um, I told my agent, I said, uh, I want the, the option came up third, third time. And he goes, obviously, you want the option money, right? And I said, no, no, I want my idea back. I want yeah. my book back. Yeah. And I took the option and he, my attorney says, you know, no one ever does this. They just right. live on option money for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I said, you know what? I'm not that money hungry. Yeah. I want my, I, I, in today's world where you have Hulu and Netflix and Amazon and everyone else, I can literally take that and go sell it somewhere else. Yeah. You know, why be lazy and keep collecting mailbox money from Sony once a year when I could take it back and I have a chance of actually putting it out there. Right. Right? Yep. Now, nothing's happened yet, but, you know. And that's the other weird part is, is it's all tied up in distribution as well, whether you're talking about books or television. And so, for example, it's like the thing that I, I learned more than anything else is that these big networks, these big companies, even publishers, uh, they're intellectual property companies. They're not what they appear to be, right? They're, they're something where they have assets that they turn into products. So, for example, they make a fitness star, and then that, that, that star goes on other shows and uh, under the same you know contract, the same deal, because now you're a product now, and then they shop you around to all of their assets that they own as intellectual property, the magazines, right. the, the late-night talk shows, the daytime talk shows, all that stuff. What I didn't realize before this is that those are products and assets, owned by the very networks that they're on, that they're shopping around and putting in front of people, if it's going through the mainstream channels. But uh, if it's not, then you've, you have people like us who are basically indie creators, right? Right. And we don't have an organized distribution system that gets us in front of people every week or every day or something like that. So right. we're all left with uh, Justin Bieber, Paris Hilton, and all this bubblegum schlop and uh, our culture is a mess. But So how can we make that any better? Uh, the only way we could do it is by what guys like uh, you and me, what we're doing is, you know, and people are always saying to me, you know, you do the podcast and you're just on the Internet. Yeah. And I go, just on the Internet. Think about that. Right. Um, I'm making a comfortable living just being on the Internet. Yeah. Um, I'm clearly not getting billions of dollars, but yep. I, I can live. Uh, I'll give you an example without throwing any numbers around. Uh, uh, Nina Teichels, who wrote a great book, uh, yeah, Big Fat Surprise, on one she's of my great. favorite books. Yeah. She's been on my show twice. And off the air, uh, I was talking to Nina and we were talking about, you know, because her book was done by a big company. Mm -hmm. And I know both of your books have been done by big companies. Just one. But, one of them. Yeah. yeah. But my, uh, I have a very good lawyer with a great mustache, and he loves it when I say that. <laughs> right, and your book, you know, you got a nice advance up front. We talked about it at a restaurant one yes, day, and you did very well in that, and, and, and bravo. Um, that same tricky. company, Oof. for my second book, 
that same company that you mentioned that day for my second book offered right. me exactly half of what they were offering you. Jeez. And, but as I was telling Nina, guess what? By doing my book myself mm -hmm. and never having it in an airport or in a Barnes and Noble or anywhere else other than Amazon and on um, audible.com, I was able to make more money. Right. You take more of a chance, but you make 70 or 80 percent, depending on which outlet it is, of the book. Right. And if you have something, if you have a good book, you have a chance to make more money. Yeah. yeah. But you'll never see my book in an airport. Right. So what? It'll yeah. never be on a, you know, my friend Howie Mandel made the New York Times bestseller list by selling 6,000 books, mm -hmm. you know, within a week or so. Right. 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 The book ended up selling more than that. But. And, and how many have you sold York, at this point? Just for comparison, way sake. north of a hundred thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's it's climbing. It's getting up there. I would yeah. have to look, but it's way north of a hundred. And um, you know, in today's world, it's like, well, he didn't sell a million books. Nobody sells a million books anymore. Sure, but there are millions of podcast downloads. I, I added up all my music over the years because I've been doing like digital distribution and stuff like that for a long right. time. And if you count like the ABC stuff and all that promotion that came along with it and some of the international viewership and all that it's it's north of 50 million downloads streams you know touches right. 50 million <laughs> and it could keep going up exponentially for infinity at this point now contrast that to a, a major network prime time they're getting what like two million viewers a night if they're lucky uh, right you know a podcast, having your own, your own free speech on the internet, owning your name, saying whatever you want, that has its benefits. I, I was trying to explain to my parents um, the number of people that listen to each podcast. Yeah. Right? It's and weird. I said, think of it this way. Every time I put a podcast out, now think about this, Mom. You guys go to LSU to watch football games, right? And she goes, yeah. I said, okay. There's a hundred and 10,000 people in that audience, right? When you look at everyone in that audience, right? And she'll go, yeah. And I'll say, okay, uh, multiply that by eight and think of your son standing on a 50 yard line talking to those people. That's what happens. Yeah, that and, is way too much responsibility for you. Yeah, and then they go, <laughs> my God, really? And I go, yeah, yeah really. Yeah. You know, and th they have trouble comprehending that, you know? No, so do I. Uh, yeah. 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 And look, morning drive time radio, when mm -hmm. you think about it, how many people are listening to that? Right? It's hard to know. Right. Not not that many. Yeah. And, you know, they get more when you go onto a morning drive time radio, you can bring more audience to them than they can bring to you. Right. That's the right? wacky part. Yeah, that, that's sure. the crazy part. And they get paid millions, some of those guys, you know, yeah. back in the day, you know, they, they were getting right. millions of dollars a year. They were rich. Yeah. Now they can't get anyone to listen. Let me ask you this. If people are listening to this right now, totally confused, how how can we help them find someone who you can tell is speaking from, you know, their own voice? They're not a puppet, let's say, of, of the mainstream media machine. Are there telltale signs? Either way, I, I don't know if they're, you know, Abel, you and I were kind of here at the beginning, right? Of when podcasting of another wave. Started. Yeah. Yeah. Like podcasting had started, you know, it was like some kind of MP3 file floating around on the Internet. And then, right. you know, I've been around for five years. You've been around for how many years? Uh, about seven now. Yeah. Yeah. So way longer than me. So we've all been around for around, you know, that amount of time. But it wasn't like you and I got into a war. You found no, me, no. I found you, and right. hey, man, you got a podcast? Me too, dig it. You yeah. come on my show, I'll go on your show. Right, we jam. That, right, that's how you know people aren't BSing you, yeah. right? Yeah. We, were all, I, we, we first met at a convention. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to this convention and, uh, you know. Because we were both nominated for those awards. Yeah, we were nominated for some podcast award, right? Yeah. And I remember sitting there that night going, because you sat next to me, right. and in order to get out of your seat, you would have to cross over me. <laughs> and I, I said to Anna, oh my God, if we win over Abel James, this is going to be super embarrassing because the guy is way better than us. <laughs> and we did not want to win. I'm oh not kidding God. about that. Because it, it, you know, I said, they better not call 
Because it was weird that night because, as you know, Adam Carolla has the biggest podcast in the world, right? right. And, of course, he, he wasn't at the show that night, but he's in a category of comedy against these other people. And they mm-hmm. picked the other people and not Adam Carolla. Always, yeah. Right? And it's like, okay, he's got millions of downloads per day. Yeah. Per day. And this guy might have 200,000 downloads per month or something. And these nerds are picking that guy over Adam Carolla. And then you go, okay, okay. Now, if they pick me over Abel James, who has a much bigger show than me, this is going to be, they're going to boo me walking up to that stage. Oh, come on. <laughs> and thank God they picked you, man, because you, you, you deserved it. And, uh, yeah, it was just one of those things, you know, it's like, uh, I know we got away from the question you asked, but that's how you know if someone is BSing or not. When, when you could go on other guys' shows that, yeah. that are pushing the same product and and you you tell people, go listen to his show. If you're not listening to me, listen to him. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, that's right. You know, that that's what it is. You know, we're not I mean, we're not overtly selling stuff. You know? Right. Well, that's not you, you. I think that's a good point. If you listen to the subtext of what someone is saying, if you listen to the words behind the words, you can tell if someone is just like marketing to you all of the time. Right. Right. Uh, you can tell you, you might listen to them on autopilot without realizing it. But if you ever know, if I notice that that's happening, I'm like, oh, pff, put that off. You know, I'm being sold to. I, I can't. I, I can't stand it. Now, you and I both know how hard it is. It's tough to describe to people who are listening on the other end uh, how hard it is to make a living doing this on your own terms when you don't yeah. sign those deals, when you turn down. I'm sure you as well, but I, I turned down probably 5, 10x the money um, that I eventually made. You know, like I would turn down 10x my income every year. Um, yeah. And, and it's hard. It's hard to get by doing that. So you do have to find creative ways uh, like you. You decided to make pure multivitamin supplements that don't have fillers and paint and all that junk yeah. in them. Um, some might see, oh, that's that's Vinny selling out. Right. Or when I sell something, it's like that's able selling out. But you do have to come up with creative ways to do it. And I think. The promise, this is one of the things that, that we're uh, excited about doing, is basically building your own business that can be your sponsor so that you can be an independent machine, essentially, where you don't need to sign those deals and, and get rid of your free speech and all of that. And then you can create your content for free as much as you'd like, whatever form you want it to be in. And if people watch it, then ultimately it'll support you in one way or another. And I think that that's hopefully going to be the future because this whole advertising thing and this whole everyone being bought out and owned as a puppet has got to stop. Yeah. Um, look, we've been, you'd be, you know, just like you, we get approached all the time. Um, uh, a big aggregate company approached me and offered me an incredible deal, but they would own this show. They, and yeah. you know, they can start telling me when I can use the F word and not use the F word and all this right. kind of stuff. And I was like, no, 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 no. And you know, to your point about my company, uh, pure vitamin club, um, every now and then I will hire an expert. I'll give them a couple of thousand bucks. Hey, yeah. how can I make this better? Right. And the first thing they'll say is, well, you need to do some clickbait. You need to do some funneling. You need to do all this <laughs> sure. stuff. And I'll go, okay. I hate when I go and try to buy something on the internet and that happens. If something pops up too quickly for me or something, I go, no, 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 I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I'll go find it somewhere else, sure. even if it's more expensive. And uh, I don't like that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I won't do that to people. And then uh, another company came in and they said, uh, man, you are leaving so much money on the table with Pure Vitamin Club. And I said, well, how? He says, well, you don't advertise your vitamin company on your podcast very often. I said, yeah, I do an ad at the end, you know, at the very end, and mm-hmm. someone's still sticking around, they'll hear it. And he goes, no, 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 no. If you said during your show that by them, he, he goes, can you, can you basically squint and say that your magnesium helps people lose weight? I said, mm, that would be a lie. And he goes, but if you can just tell people that your magnesium could help people lose weight, then you can raise, you know, th- with the number of people listening to your show mm-hmm. and the number of people who believe in you, you can make, you know, helicopter money, as he called it. Yeah. And I, I said, well, but then I would be lying. So how would I sell my next product? Mm-hmm. People would know I'm, I'm now. 
Yeah, you'll need, exactly. You'll need a lot of extra magnesium to sleep at night with that. Yeah, I would have to stuff. be crapping my pants with magnesium just to fall asleep. <laughs> and I'm not willing to lie to people. That's a magnesium you know, I, I joke, up, everybody. Yeah, yeah. If you take too much magnesium, folks, you will crap. Uh, go to my website and buy my magnesium. <laughs> um, but you understand what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I always feel like I'm talking to my parents, and I would never lie to my parents about what to take and what to do. So why would I lie to everyone else's parents? Yeah. You yeah. know, that, that's how I look at it. Right. <sighs> and boy, we're in the middle of it right now. It's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? It's nuts. It, it is. It but is meanwhile, crazy. you're doing you're doing live shows as well. And yeah. uh, that's going super well, too. So tell us about that. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have ever guessed um, that that would have happened. Uh, I, I'll tell you exactly how it did happen. Uh, people were calling me to to come talk. As I'm sure you get talking engagement, you know, speaking engagements yep. all the time. And it would be go, you know, Ivy League schools on the East Coast or here, or there, colleges, hospitals yep. and so on. And um, and then I got a, this guy who was the head of an insurance company or something for all these insurance companies in Europe paid me a crazy amount of money to go to Amsterdam to a convention and be the keynote speaker. And then from that, um, this other guy, uh, Deep Pockets in India, mm -hmm. uh, brought me to India for 14 or 15 days, uh, paid for me, Serena, and Andy Schreiber, my partner at purevitaminclub.com. Wow. Sure. And they sometimes had me speaking two and three times a day, hmm. um, doing the same one hour to 90 minute speech that I do. Yeah. You know, by the end of, of India, I couldn't even talk anymore. Yeah. Um, I was talking to, uh, I was at a party and I was talking to Adam Carolla's guy, a guy named Mike August. Mm -hmm. And Mike goes, hey, um, I, I see where you do speeches because I put a few of them up on my YouTube. My YouTube is horrible. Yeah, but I just is, threw man. the speech. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to do YouTube, Abel. Yeah. yeah. We're not all good looking like you. We can't just put naked pictures of ourselves up and just get women to go, oh my God, he's so cute. <laughs> Oh, my God. You Shake know, it if you so, got it, Vinny. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> How does Allison hold on to you, man? It's like all these women clawing at you like a rock star. Have you seen Allison? Yeah, I have. I have. That's how. She's cute. That's one little <laughs> basket of cute right there. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm talking to Adam's guy, and he goes, well, who, who gets, who, who's booking you? Yeah. And I said, no one. I said, as a matter of fact, uh, we went to one of these speaking bureaus and told them that I was making tens of thousands of dollars per year just speaking and coming up with the fee. I would come up with my I would negotiate my own fee. Yeah. And um, he said, really? And the spe I said, the speaking bureaus didn't even get back to me. Right. I I'm at Ivy League schools. I'm in India. I'm in Europe. I'm in Oslo. I'm everywhere talking and they're not even getting back to me. I don't know who they're getting back to, <laughs> right. but a guy making tens and tens of thousands per year talking, yeah. they're not getting back to. Yeah. He started booking me. Yeah. And um, he, he books me. He goes, hey, I have you booked. And I said, yeah, where? And he goes, uh, the Ice House, Pasadena. And I went, that's a comedy club. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. I said, I'm not a comic. He goes, that's okay. You know, you just put, as, as you know, these guys, there put asses in seats. Just put asses in seats. So, <laughs> okay. So my deal was if I could sell it out, then I don't have to worry about anyone walking off the street looking for a comedian. Right. So I just worked my butt off to sell that house out. And I did. <clears throat> and went up there and did 90 minutes. And um, they loved it. Uh, and then I got a call from uh, the Irvine Improv. Mm-hmm. We went down there and kicked butt, and cool. uh, that did really well. And I did a few more, and then Mike said, um, you should bring someone on stage with you that can bring in even more audience. So uh, this girl, Gina Grad, who is a morning drive time DJ here in L.A. You mm -hmm. know, she's pretty big here in L.A. Cool. Um, so I went, geez. And I remember the first time Gina and I went on stage together um, because we know each other from the Adam Carolla show. And I like Gina and I helped her lose some weight. And she's sitting in the green room with me f five minutes before we go on. And I'm looking at her going, oh, geez, I've been doing my own show for two years. I know how to walk and talk and chew gum by myself. Yeah. 
But I don't know how this is supposed to work. It didn't occur to me before that moment. But now this woman's going to be on stage and I have to somehow integrate her into my show. Right. And it, it just didn't occur to me before then. And sure. L- luckily enough, she brought all these news stories with her and all these really bad fad diets and the whole thing. The show was better than it ever was. That's great. And uh, we've done it three times now. It gets stronger every time like that. And uh, we're going to just keep doing it because we keep selling out audiences. And uh, it's mostly been in, in L.A. so far. Or are you touring around? Uh, L.A. and Southern California, we've gone as far. I, I've gone as deep as San Diego. Yeah. Uh, people want us. You know, people go, hey, come up to Seattle. Come out to Chicago. The problem is Gina has a job on Monday. She has to mm-hmm. be in the studio at six o'clock on Monday morning. Oh, yeah, that's tough. So I can go to those clubs. So right. I may start going out to Chicago and Seattle and everywhere on my own. Very cool. Uh, because I love doing the live show. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, do you do live shows besides singing and all that? I have done lots of live shows. And then when I started uh, my podcast, especially like four years ago, that's kind of when I stopped playing live shows. But I was playing 250 shows a year. And wow. uh, it was a lot. So I was pretty happy to not do it for a while and just focus on digital. But now, I mean, you know, people like us, we get bored so quickly and you need to, yeah. you know, keep yourself entertained. And I, I do miss doing live shows. So all you just talking about it makes me want to do it again. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I usually have a guitar or a saxophone that I'm playing or, or something <laughs> like that, but I don't need to. And that could easily be a comedy show, especially if I played clarinet. So, uh, <laughs> which I actually play quite well. You'd be happy to know. Uh, let's talk, though, about some of your road trips, because that kind of loops in with this whole lifestyle. I think this yeah. one might kind of air more toward the, the entertainers, artists and outsiders who are listening. But everyone goes on road trips and everyone needs yeah. to eat well. And we all know that the road uh, is <laughs> it's not the healthiest place to be. It's almost impossible to do it well unless you know very specific tricks, unless you are or, are a, uh, I would say, road warrior like Vinny is yeah. here. So what are your top th- top things that you do every single time you hop in that car? Well, the thing I do is I, I always pack a little ice chest. Um, and it doesn't have to be a big, giant ice chest. It's one of those little small, you know, they're made out of soft material coolers. Sure. Yeah. And you just put the element in there, you know, that you keep in your freezer that keeps it cold, you yeah. know, just a little plastic pack. And that's good enough. It will keep hard-boiled eggs fresh. It will keep olives fresh. It right. will keep fresh foods. cheese and um, cold cuts and, and uh, avocados mm-hmm. all feeling fine in there, right? It doesn't have to be ice-packed. It just needs to be cool. Well, I recently took a road trip. I came across your great state of Texas. I went from here to Louisiana and back and within a week. It was 4,000 miles. Wow. And when I left... I packed my bag, you know, and I packed my little cooler and the whole thing. And I, and I was petting the dogs goodbye, and I was giving Serena a kiss, and yeah. I'll see you in a week, honey, and all this kind of stuff. And I took off, and when I got to Arizona, I was filling up, and I opened the back of my car, and my little cooler wasn't there. <laughs> of course. Okay. Now, as you know, because you, you guys, you and Allison, you guys travel a lot. I know you guys take off, you pull, you, you take your diesel truck, and you pull your thing around. And it's a lot easier because you got you're carrying a house behind you. Right. But I was in a sports car, and mm-hmm. I, there's you, there's no way to hook a house to a Corvette. So I was kind oh, of. You drive stuck. a Corvette? Now you make so much. Yeah, I'm, sense. I'm that guy. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm are, that guy. You're totally that guy. That's okay. Yeah, I'm an old guy. So I'm a yeah. different kind of guy, but I'm one of those guys too. Yeah, I drove I, a Porsche I just for love a while. Vets. <laughs> and anyone who doesn't love vets, you're just not American. Um, American. That's right. So, no, keep on <laughs> as going. I say in Texas. Um, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot my ice chest. And I said, okay, I can make do by getting to a healthier fast food restaurant. Yeah. But as you know, by the time you get to New Mexico, it's just nothing. You're looking at lizards, snakes, and rocks, right? Yeah. And um, so now I'm in El Paso, you know, I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just not going to eat. I'm even looking for a Starbucks because I know Starbucks carries heavy whipping cream and that can sustain life yeah. for forever, right? It can, sure. Especially on a road There's trip. no Starbucks out there in the desert. You know, yeah. I kept passing them by accident, you know? Yeah. So I so literally did some, 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> I literally went all the way to El Paso, uh, which was like 12 hours later, without eating anything. Yeah. Right. I just I just fasted. But because I'm so fat adapted mm -hmm. that I found that I was more clear and more coherent as I went because I wasn't eating anything. Right. Uh, and when I stopped at, at uh, gas stations, I was looking for anything close to raw nuts. Yeah. You know, it's like if I could just find raw nuts, something that hasn't been bastardized, I, I will eat that. Couldn't find them. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I told myself if worse came to worse. I would just buy some pork rinds, you know, some <laughs> yeah. pig skins. Sure. Just to give up. But it never got to that. Um, I was able to find a Chipotle. Okay. At about nine o'clock when I got to. And, and I, I just told him, I said, put some beef in there and just throw some guacamole on top. Mm -hmm. And the girl goes, sugar, I don't even know how to charge you for this. <laughs> and I said, well, I hate to tell you how to do your job, but. I have the two most expensive things. Just charge me whatever regular price is. Right. But that's all I needed to get by because I am fat adapted. And, you know, it, it doesn't, as you know, we, you know, as carnivores, we don't have to eat all the time if we're not on that carb train. Right. Um, the next morning I woke up at the hotel that came with a breakfast and as I said, tell everyone, and this is a road trick. If you go to an IHOP or if you're in a hotel where they give you the free breakfast, the way they get the eggs to extend is they put flour in them. Mm -hmm. So I tell everyone, don't eat the flour. Just get them to make you fresh eggs. They'll do it. They have eggs in the back and they'll do it. Mm -hmm. So I had three fresh eggs uh, and a piece of their really bad bacon that was out with the free meal. Sure. And um, that took me through the whole next day. I fasted again the next day until that evening when I got to my brother's house in Gonzales, Louisiana, and had a piece of cheese and went to bed. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not how I, I would normally take that pack with me and then find a grocery store and replenish the olives and, you know, the eggs and the whole thing. And I, I'd like to comment on that for a second because I don't want people to run away with it and say that uh, we're, we're fetishizing this, right, where you're fasting for long periods of time all the time or what have you. But I would say that, uh, especially if you are in the position where you don't have good food around you, being fat adapted is a fantastic thing. And it's basically just like, you know, you hear Dr. Uh, Perlmutter talk about doing those three day fasts, right? Which right. helps kind of get your body back in balance and that sort of thing. So we're not talking about anorexia here. Every time you leave the house, we're talking about the ability to kind of shift into, all right, I'm driving all day. I'm not really moving that much. My body doesn't feel like it needs to gorge on a huge, uh, you know, triple hamburger and fries right now. Uh, right. That keeps calling to me from the billboards. It's it's something where you can actually live this way and fat adaptation has a lot of benefits. But I would also love to hear you uh, talk for a quick second, Vinny, about keto and ketosis is all the rage these days. And even more right. cool is keto supplements, which allow you to eat a bunch of carbs and sugars, but still be in ketosis. So can you just add a little bit of sanity to this whole conversation where you're still eating your veggies, but you are fat adapted and you're not taking a whole bunch of junk? Um, uh, being in dietary ketosis does not automatically mean you will lose weight, folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, more to your point before that, I don't believe in using trickery like fasting or intermittent fasting or any of that for weight loss. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I live in dietary ketosis for one reason and one reason only, uh, I'm a, I'm a cancer survivor mm -hmm. and it's, um, there is some enough studies out there that cause me to have my own belief that by not eating sugars will keep me from getting cancer again. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to have a recurrence, um, within five years of, of being cleared and I'm coming up on 10 years. So there's wow. a strong possibility that that works yeah um but by the way listen to the past episode with Vinny for that whole yeah. story we've talked about this before oh yeah we, we've done yeah. it go back and listen to abel's old shows because we've covered this at nauseam um uh, I'm, I'm i'm buddies with dominic diagostino the guy mm -hmm. who actually created the first exogenous ketones yeah um and uh, I talked to him on, on my show, on my show is Fitness Confidential, if you guys have the hankering to go listen to something else. Um, it's a great show. I man. asked Dom on the last time he was on, I said, uh, why did you create these? I mean, they're not really needed for the average person. Mm -hmm. 
And he, you know, Dom gets a lot of money from the government to create supplements basically for SEAL Team 6 and these kind of people. Sure. And he said, you know, these Navy SEALs don't live in ketosis. But we figured out that if they have to go into the field really quickly, like if they know where Osama bin Laden is and we have to throw him into theater, as they call it, really mm -hmm. quickly, uh, we need to not have to worry about them having to keep eating in order not to lose their energy. Mm -hmm. So we created this product to throw them into instant ketosis so that they can now go do their job of getting the bad guy and be in theater right. for 30, 40 hours without having to worry about having to carb up, right? if you will. Um, Dominic never meant for this to be where people would take it and create ketone bars and ketone supplements and ketone. Mm -hmm. Look, if anybody wants to be in dietary ketosis, you don't need a supplement to do it. You, you could just not eat anything other than fat for a couple of days and <laughs> voila, there you are. Right. You're in dietary ketosis. <laughs> that is You've so saved a ton free. Of money. It's amazing yeah, it's how free, free that is. Exactly. It's the freest thing you could do. <laughs> and by and, and by the way, uh, you know, the esters you have to take to throw to exogenously throw yourself into ketosis sure. is apparently I've never tasted them, but apparently they're well, pretty nasty. I've, I've tried a few. Yeah. <laughs> Are they bad? They're bad, right? They're bad. They're, I, this is what I think. I think that unless it's in capsule form and you just swallow it, um, supplements need to taste good or else you're just not. You might take them for a little while, but you won't keep taking them. So right. that that's what I noticed with me. Uh, it has to taste good. It has to have some, so especially if you don't need it, it's super expensive and it tastes bad. I can't believe how many products there are like that. It makes no sense. As a matter of fact, I, look, I don't even believe in, t you know, taking protein powder. It's like you can eat an egg or you can eat a piece of meat or yeah. you can eat chicken or you can eat any tons of things. Why go get a bastardized version of it? <laughs> oh my God. I laughed so hard. Uh, Allison, she said, when she sees other guys and kind of compares body, she, she comments to me about that. And she said, those guys look like they have a lot of protein powder every day. <laughs> and it's just, I knew exactly what she meant, you know? And that's yeah. not something I'm going for, you know? Like, <laughs> not to say that that's 100% scientifically accurate, folks, but anyway, I, I know what they're talking about. But, you about. know, look, it's accurate enough. You know, I was with two of my nephews when I was on my road trip. And one of them is basically a bro science guy. Mm -hmm. You know, if it comes in, a, in in some kind of packet or if it, if it's been written about on on Google, he right. will do it. Yeah. And he's a strong guy, and he's you know he's one of these muscled up guys, but he's also got the gut on him, and he's got some extra. You can see the water in his cheeks. Mm -hmm. And my other nephew, his younger brother, uh, who looks up to him, he says to me, "We're eating crawfish one night," and he goes, "Uncle Vinny." Um, should should I um should I be taking um uh creatine? Yeah. And I, I said no, absolutely not. There's no reason to take creatine. And he said why? I said well, your body naturally makes all the creatine you need, and if not, we get it from red meat and other sources. And by taking it, you will stop your body from from making it. And there's no reason to take that exogenously. And he looked at his brother, and they started smirking. I said, don't listen to anything that idiot has to say. <laughs> And my nephew says to me, the, the one that's all pumped up, he goes, right. hey, bro, you have your opinion. I have my opinion. And I said, yeah, but mine is steeped in scientific fact. <laughs> you know, yours is what you you heard at the gym last week. Right. You know, <laughs> there's no correlation between the two. Right. Well, and, and you have such a it's the wrong word, but a mature view of all of this, because I think what's missed in especially the, the diet and fitness industry is that to truly succeed, you need to do this forever and you need to find a way. Um, it doesn't have to be fun, but you need to do it every day. You need to do a couple yeah. of, a few, a handful of things every day and then it's pretty much figured out. And maybe you can have some fun with it. You can do your triathlons, you can run your marathons, you can do all that stuff, but you don't have to become a cardio bunny. You don't have to join a, a club or a cult for this to happen. You can just do a small amount of pretty straightforward things and get your life back. So for the people who are looking for like lifelong health, what quickly, what are those things? Just to simplify it right down for people. There is no fitness in a bottle. You cannot get fitness in a bottle. You can't get sleep in a bottle. Uh, sleep, speaking of sleep, one of the most important things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, 
There is no window to eat after a workout. Forget about that. And there's no, no supplement you're going to take before a workout that will help you short of taking steroids, which will kill you. Yeah. So, you know, th that's that's the message. I mean, look, 37 years of doing this. And before I was doing this as a job, I walked into a gym when I was eight years old. It, it was 1970, the day I walked into a gym. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it all come and go a yeah. million times. Yeah. And I've never seen anything good come of it by mm -hmm. taking any sort of supplements Ooh. in this and the whole what, thing. What are some things, Vinny, that you've seen before that the next generations coming up might think are new and cool? Like raw vegan diet, for example, more than 100 years old. People have been arguing about that for a long time. Most, most people that don't know one that, comes like, and goes. Yeah. Um, creatine has been coming and going. Uh -huh. uh, the amount of protein comes and goes. Yeah. Um, uh, it's starving yourself, you know, the, mm -hmm. the whole, you know, just, you know, that comes and goes. It, Sometimes with tapeworms, Some of them are just right? so, oh, that was big in the 70s. Right. You know how people now, t you know, like now these girls, I don't know if they're doing it in Texas, but they, they have butt implants put in. Right. So it's real hip out here to have like the big Kardashian ass with skinny legs. Right. And Serena looks at it and goes, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> and, and we're looking at it going... I know, but, and I tell her, I said, you know, back in the seventies, women would smoke to lose weight and right. they would have tapeworms put in to lose weight. Yep. And now you look at that and you go, wow, you had a tapeworm put in to lose weight. Yes. People have been doing crazy stuff for a long time. Yeah. Um, there was a time back in the seventies where people were putting an anticoagulant into cow's blood and drinking the cow's blood. What? I haven't heard about that I, one. Dude, I can sit here. We can have Wesley a scotch Snipes one night. I would love that. There, dude, they, there were things over the years that people were doing. And you would just look at that and go, because the reason they had to put an anticoagulant in is because they didn't want to choke on it by it coagulating in their esophagus and killing oh them. My Lord. Yeah. I, I, the things people have done to be healthy that make absolutely no sense. So what's coming next? I, I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to do about know. it? You can't lose your mind. I I, I just go crazy looking at, you know, <laughs> I, I was saying on stage the other night, Yeah. you walk into a gym. I, I go to my gym every day to do the rehab on my shoulder. I have my shoulder replaced and mm -hmm. I go to the gym every day and I'm in the same spot doing the same rehab exercises at the same time. So for the past two years, I've been looking at the same people mm -hmm. on the same machines you know, humping the same Stairmaster, humping the same elliptical, humping the same um, uh, treadmill, and so yeah. on and so forth. And I look at them, and I call it the wax museum, because you walk into a wax museum, nothing ever changes. Yeah. Same outfit, same people, same machines every day. It's, it's a wax museum. And um, I notice that most of these people never gain weight, they never lose weight. A lot of them have weight to lose, yet they're, they're humping these machines for hours on end. And if they ever did the math and saw the crazy that was going on, they would realize that, in fact, the statement I make every time I walk on stage, uh, exercise is a poor way to lose weight. Mm -hmm. They would realize that that was the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, every now and then, you, you know, people call me, I do these consults and they'll say, well, I did lose 10 pounds and I gained it all back. And but then that's because I stopped jogging. No, it has right. nothing to do with the jogging. Yeah. You know, um, the fact that people sign up for marathons because, you know, their good intentions is I'm going to sign up for a marathon. And by the time I get to the starting line, I will be lean and sinewy like Meb. Right. Yeah. No, you're not going to look like Meb. He, he's a Kenyan and he's built that way and he's mm -hmm. predisposed to be that way. You're going to look like you, except you might be heavier because the day you sign up for a marathon you start exercising more, you start burning more sugar, mm -hmm. and the sugar industry is right there to help you along. Yep. Gatorade, goo, power bar, cliff bars, uh, uh, you, know, you name it. Yep. They're all there. Jelly belly, getting ready to give you I, jelly I've beans. Them all. I, I've trained that way. Yeah. You know, and, and everyone is like, you know, okay, I signed up for a marathon. Now I'm like a kid at a birthday party. I'm just right. eating sugar. There's all this on free the candy. It's the most amazing thing in the world. It really is, you know, and it drives me crazy. I ran a few marathons here in uh, in Austin. I remember 
one that I ran when I was lining up with some of the other people who were uh, running it because it was it was huge. This is before uh, Lance Armstrong, a local hero, kind of came tumbling down. <laughs> he was running that race too. But I, I was just kind of looking around. And, uh, you know, all these people are going to try to run almost 30 miles. And yeah. I was astounded by how many of them had at least 20, 30 pounds, which if you if if you're carrying extra weight for that distance, like just to put it into perspective right now, just to be in the shape I am, I'm in, that feels good. I'm like 170, 175 and pretty low body fat. When I was running marathons, I was like 148. And I cannot right. imagine running in in like being this heavy now because it's more muscle but it's that's right. not good for running that doesn't help unless you're doing short sprints but i was just amazed by how many people had these bellies and uh were just kind of doughy all the way around despite the fact that they're probably running 20 30 50 miles a week at least every week and when you think about how much time that takes to run um you know just any you know, aerobic class or just going to the gym for one hour will never cap what those people are doing. Right. Let me put a, a finer point on it. Back in the early 90s when I was doing all the 24-hour and 48-hour ultra races before ultra was a thing, mm -hmm. um, there are these it, – it's like a sub-community of cyclists who would do these 200-mile cycle things. Yeah. And in order not to get bored training on the weekends, I would sign up. And sometimes drive two and three hundred miles to get to an event <laughs> just to go cycle with other people for 200 miles. That's awesome. And since it's such a subculture. Yeah. You would meet the same people all the time. Sure. And they were lovely people. Yeah. And I would see these women with, you know, fat on their bodies, big dimply saddlebag legs and the whole thing. Yet these people were superb athletes. They, mm -hmm. they could ride. Right. 200 miles. Right. Which means they had to train. All week long, every week, all year round to be able to go 200 miles. Right. Right. Yet they were still fat. And a year later, I'd see them at, at events, still fat. Two years later, yeah. still fat, never losing an ounce. And these are people who are putting more miles on a bike than the average American puts on a car per year. Mm -hmm. Right. That's crazy talk. And yeah. they wouldn't lose weight. But you know what? Every 30 miles on these trips, what do they have? You could get a banana. You could get an orange. You could get a Pop-Tart. You could get a Hostess Twinkie. You could get a brownie. The one thing you couldn't get was an avocado, <laughs> an olive, yeah. a piece of cheese, a cold cut. None of that existed. Right. Oh, by the way, they, all of these things would have, as I call it, the SARS bowl. It was a bowl of M&Ms where you could just reach in with your snotty hands and just grab a, a bowl of M&Ms and SARS, as I would always say. <laughs> Uh, which, by the way, I never touched any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, oh, my God, they're serving junk food that I never grew up on. It, what What's going on here? Yeah. Well, as you say in your book, and this is such a great way to think about it, junk food like that, you know what it is when you see it. And it's smoking cigarettes. Yeah. It's like, imagine that's a box of, of 20 cigarettes that you have right there, right? And, yeah. and I think if people can start to think of, oh, I don't get this allotment of candy every day, um, that's just poison for me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because that's right. the mentality that you have. You've already, you faced death 10 years ago, right? Yeah. It's like the M&Ms don't appeal to you. This is a whole different game that you're playing. And, and what people don't understand is that they're playing that game too, whether they realize it or not. I think most will never realize it because it's too innocent. Hmm. You know, right. uh, the M&M &M is too innocent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can look at a bottle of scotch and go, eh, if I have too much of that, you know, we all know an alcoholic, you know, I lost a friend to alcoholism uh, mm -hmm. this past week, oh, I'm sorry, um, close childhood buddy. And, um, you know, we can look at alcohol. We all know someone, or we can look at a celebrity who lost a bout to alcohol. Uh, or drugs, you know, that looks like a rattlesnake to me, you know, when, when you think of drugs. But, you know, come on, a, a Twinkie? Come on. we a Twinkie never killed anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, except for in the Twinkie defense when a guy killed, you know. You're, do you even know that? You, you're too What's, young to know that. I don't even know. I don't think I do. Really? Uh, there, was a, there was a politician in San Francisco named Harvey Milk. Oh, Milk. Like okay, sure. 
and they did a movie on him um, yeah. and they used a Twinkie defense. Right. The guy said he was off his rocker because he ate too much sugar. Yeah. And uh, he was out of his mind from sugar and right. literally got off on a not really got off, but got didn't get the death penalty based on a Twinkie defense. Right. Or something like that. You know, someone can look it up. It's hard to believe that that came from the same story and it goes with milk. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, milk anyway, and Twinkies. Yeah. We're, we're I just, never thought of that. It's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, but anyway, we're just about out of time. Is there anything else you want to say before we tell folks uh, where they can find you? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, because I figured if I ask you on the air, you can't say no. Uh, <laughs> would you Would you please come back on my show? I would be more than happy to. I would be honored. You haven't been on in forever. so Let's do um, it, man. Uh, just email me. Allison has my information. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Cool. We'll hit it. It's been I way can't too wait, long, man. but um, yeah, people know where to find me. VinnyTortoris.com. I'm on Twitter. I'll answer all your questions. Yada yada yada. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Vinny, you're welcome here anytime. Thank you so much for coming on once again. Thank you, buddy. Thanks again for listening to Fat Burning Man. Don't forget before you go. Check out fatburningtribe.com. If you have a question for me that you want answered about how to improve your performance, what to eat for dinner, how to drop fat quickly, how to improve your overall health, or anything else, we answer all of your questions there. So quickly, you can get the first month for just $1 for a limited time. Check it out at fatburningtribe.com. All right, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Fat Burning Man. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the podcast app, or wherever else you might be listening to or watching this show. Got a second? Please leave me a quick review on iTunes. I always love hearing from you, and if you think someone else might like and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or with a family member. You can get in touch with me on Twitter at FatBurnMan and Facebook by typing in Abel James or FatBurningMan. Drop me a line anytime. Did you know that I've recorded over 150 episodes of Fat Burning Man, winning four awards in independent media and hitting number one in more than eight countries? And here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode for free. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com I'll give you a second to type it in fatburningman.com and you'll get all the show notes in video and audio versions for all the past episodes of Fat Burning Man better yet enter your best email at fatburningman.com sign up for my newsletter and I'll even send you a quick start guide to start burning fat right now and a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free fat burning download straight to your inbox and make sure that you never miss a show again. This is Abel James signing off. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week. Then literally in that same growl, I think you can hear that they're saying normal words, but the energy behind those words are completely different because they've allowed themselves to explore these different dimensions of their thought processes.